So now that we've looked at all the information we've gathered and tried to gauge more or less the, the levels and the, the places where the problems are coming from, um, we can start to plot a little bit the client's trajectory and their path of transformation. So what we find is although there are like many many sources of problems as we saw it can be social, it can be karmatic, it can be spiritual, astrological or um, has to do with the incarnation and it can exist on physical, emotional, mental and spiritual levels. What we tend to find is that within a, certain, a single incarnation the problem areas tend to be rather concentrated. So some people will have a lot of physical problems, other people will experience problems on an emotional level mainly, other people will experience problems mainly on a mental level. It's also the source of the problem. Some people will always get problems from a social perspective, uh, other people will have a very heavy burden to carry from their previous incarnations. Some people have heavy karma. So ultimately, once you know where several of the client's problems are coming from and the nature, you can also understand the nature of your client's, yeah, you could say, uh, development path. Are they focused on working with their body, their body consciousness, or working on their emotional coping skills, or working on their wisdom, knowledge, uh, self-discipline, or are they working on their sensitivity, their spirituality, seeing things from a higher perspective. So often the area where the problems are also shows the area where there's most opportunity for growth and development. What is the tricky part is that the client has to start to see it that way. Because often when the client is experiencing problems on a certain level, they won't see it as an opportunity, they will see it as something to avoid. Like if a person's having lots of social problems, they're always getting into arguments, fights, they're never appreciated, they're never heard. Often the client will choose to become more like a hermit and not communicate with anybody and become very silent like a mouse. And then in their effort to avoid the problems, they will also lose the opportunity to develop that part of themselves, which is actually why all these problems are occurring in, in that area. So it is very important, but also very difficult to make your clients see their problem areas as, in a way, the area which they can pioneer, which they can develop. first step in doing that is in a way diffusing the negative imagery they have. Because when a person has experienced a lot of yeah, problems in a certain area, uh, for instance problems with spirits, the person will have a very big resistance against having anything to do with spirits. Now, spirits are confusing, they are lying, they are cheating, they are evil parasites <coughs> who take your energy. I want nothing to do with them. And in a way, from the perspective of the ego, this is the right reaction. If something is upsetting your balance, is threatening your existence, your focus, well, then avoiding it or um, finding another way so it doesn't trouble you is very normal. So you pay your therapist to deal with your problems instead of doing it yourself, for instance. And this is not the right solution. If any person can bump into a problem once or twice, um, because our environment is complex, so everybody might bump into an argument with the spirit. But if you can see a pattern emerging and reasserting itself again and again, even after problems have first been removed and then coming back, then usually there is a deeper meaning to it. It's the person's goal or purpose to work with that. And here it becomes important 
that we allow the spirit to take control of it and that the person should have a more spiritual perspective on the problems rather than acting out of a very worried and stressed out ego which is trying to yeah, maintain control over a situation and usually over an area of their lives where they feel they it's very hard to have control over. So if you discover that such is the case, that in a way the person's problems are really focused on one specific area or several specific areas of their lives, it's important not just to focus on the problem and resolving the problem, but rather guiding your client in developing skills in that area and teaching them how to master that part of their lives, that domain, whether it is their body, their emotions, their mind or their spirit, and whether they're environmentally, it is yeah, their uh, social life, their uh, spirits surrounding them, uh, their karma or their previous incarnations. To give the person the tools I often also advise them to take courses, uh, not necessarily with me of course, but just in general, so that they can develop skills, different perspectives. Um, if I as a therapist work with a client and I try to yeah, teach them to relate to their problem in a different way, it is just one voice, one view, which is in a way opposing all of their experience. So this is often not very effective. But if you can get the person to go in a group which is working constructively within that area, there are lots of different views, lots of different techniques, everybody has their own way of doing it. So this is a much more rich and stimulating environment for the client to develop themselves in. Also, they start looking at it as a process of self-development, of growth, of um, in a way, um, gaining knowledge, gaining wisdom, gaining skills, rather than being focused on, okay, this is a problem, this is a weakness, this is a pain I need to resolve. So in a way, reframing the problem uh, as, and showing it as, gosh, you're going into this whole new era, area um, and exploring yeah, certain powers and the powers you already have, you want to employ them in different parts of your life. So this is really how the client should look at it, rather than seeing themselves as a victim suffering from a hostile environment. And this can take some time, talking about it with the client and in a way diffusing uh, the power of all their memories and previous experiences and in a way casting them in a different light. But once you understand your client's path and more importantly once your client starts to understand where their challenges lie in their lives and where they want to develop more skills, more power, more insight, then it becomes in a way of a struggle for survival which is causing a lot of stress and pain and anxiety, it becomes more like a race. Like, okay, how quickly can you develop skills? Can you, in a way, stay ahead of problems? And then it is, every time you meet a hurdle, gosh, will I be able to jump over it? Yes, I can manage. I have worked hard enough to manage the problems as they come up, instead of being tripped again and again and again. And hardly finding the opportunity to get to your feet before the next hurdle shows up. So there's often a lot of investment which needs to take place, but once the person starts being able to deal with their problems and they solve their problems successively, then it actually becomes a very positive thing. Then confidence starts to build and the person starts to see also the advantages of working within these areas which were troubling them before. So, I hope this has given you some insight in how to work with your client and also in how to yeah, deal with your role as a therapist towards your client. In the next 
uh, set of videos we will be going into how to work with your client's attitude and their personality structure. Okay, we'll see you next time. Good luck out there.